I wrote in my notes here, very simple, simple words. If God said it, then he can make it happen for you. But your part is to believe what he said, he can make it happen. Now, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 says this. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Amen. That's Numbers 23, 19. If God said it, is he capable of bringing it to pass? If he spoke it, will he not make it good? Amen. Amen. So we know God will do his part. God will do his part. But the question is, are you doing your part? A number of years ago, and some of you heard me uh, tell this testimony. What was it, Jerry, in about seven years ago? Seven years ago, I went to have a physical, and they discovered that there was a blockage in one of the arteries in my heart, and they wanted to do a bypass. And so they did, and I, I recovered miraculously quickly over that, and was back on the job in a short time later. And then they said, there's a blockage in the artery in your neck where the blood flows from the heart to the brain and said it's about 90% blocked and, and we need to do an incision in your neck and remove that plaque buildup and uh, it's a routine surgery. You'll be in the hospital overnight, maybe two nights and then you can go home and just relax for a while and then you'll be back to normal. So they took me in to do that procedure. The last thing I remember before they kind of put me out was routine surgery. I'll be back home possibly tomorrow. And so they did the surgery. Uh, Carolyn and my girls were there and uh, they had been there all morning. They asked the doctor, can we go have lunch and, uh, and then come, come back? Will he be in his room by the time we get back? He said, yes. So they went to lunch. When they got back, the doctor met them and said, uh, there's been a serious problem. Some of the plaque broke off and went to his brain and he's had a full-blown stroke. I lost total use of my right arm, my right leg, total memory loss. Didn't know anything. I was laying up in the bed like a vegetable. I didn't know my family. I didn't know Jerry and I didn't know Terry. I didn't know, I didn't know my wife. I couldn't speak but one word, and that word was yes. And every time the doctor would come in and I'd see his mouth no longer moving, I assumed he was through talking, and I have no clue what he said. I'd just say yes. Everything he said, yes. And uh, no memory, no memory whatsoever. He told my wife he will never be normal again. He'll never preach again. He'll never travel again. Uh, you're going to have to take care of him for the rest of your life or the rest of his life. And said, uh, and when we do release him, we recommend that you take him to a clinic where there's a chamber that he will spend four to six hours a day in to endeavor to rebuild the brain cells. But we can't promise it will help. So that was my condition. So I, I don't know anything. In fact, uh, the doctor came in one day and pointed to Carolyn and said, who is this? And I looked at her and didn't know. Pointed to Terry, who is this? I didn't know. Pointed to Jerry Ann, said, who is this? Now Jerry Ann, she's the feisty one in our family. <laughs> she got up right in my face and she said, Daddy, I'm your firstborn. You know who I am. And they said, this came out of me, Jerry Ann Obama. When they told me what I said, I thought, why in the world would I say that? I thought, well, maybe God was just giving me some insight and he was on his way out. You know, I don't know. But that was my condition, okay? Now, the doctor would come in every day and he'd put a coloring book in front of me in my lap and 
a child's coloring book and paint to butter, uh, point to butterflies and birds and trees and leaves. What's this? I didn't have a clue. Couldn't, couldn't respond. If I didn't see his lips moving, I'd just say yes. Now, my son-in-law, Rodney, is married to my youngest daughter, Terry. Rodney's a character. He's, he's, he's our oldest son. Still a kid. Okay. And I love Rodney. He's a character. Rodney come in one day, and I'm sitting on the bed just staring out at the hall. And, and Rodney came in and sat down next to me. And he said, Dad, I was in here yesterday. I don't know if you remember or not. But I came in here yesterday, and you told me that you wanted to give me your 1967 Corvette. <laughs> and I just wanted to know if I could come pick it up today. Now, he knew the only thing I could say was yes. <laughs> He's setting me up. And he said, now I don't even remember this. He said, I turned and looked at him like this and said, no. <laughs> and he said, okay, he's getting better now. We can all go home. <laughs> so finally, the doctor released me to go home in that condition, okay? But even though I can't communicate, I knew in my heart if they let me go home and put me in my own environment, I will recover from this. Sometimes the worst place in the world to try to recover is a hospital. Because they're all talking negative and talking death, you know. So I knew if they let me go home, I, I would recover. And I believed immediately. So they let me go home, and uh, my granddaughter, Rachel, she became my coach. And she'd take my hand, and, and once again, I'd have to hold this arm up with this hand because it's dead weight. It just falls aside. And, and, and she'd have to help me walk, okay? And I'd sit down out in our uh, game room, our playroom, and she would put coins in a piece of putty and put my right hand on top of it and say, Papa, dig those coins out of that putty. Wow. I couldn't even move my fingers. Nothing would work. She said, no, Papa. She'd get right in my face. Papa, you're known all over the world for teaching people not to quit, and I'm not going to let you quit. Wow. And she'd take my hand and put it on that clay, and I'd try it. The, the, the simplest things in the world became impossible. I couldn't, I couldn't even move a finger, and she, she wouldn't let me quit. Now, if I could have said something, I'd have probably said, when are you going home? <laughs> Leave me alone. You know, she wouldn't, wouldn't let me quit. And so finally I kept, I got to where a finger would move and I, I got enough of that putty away where I could see that coin. And she said a big smile came on my face. And I, and I eventually pulled that coin out of there. Then I, I, with my left hand, I pointed to the back of the property. She said, Papa, what do you want? I pointed to the property. I have a museum, and it's full of classic cars and classic motorcycles. She said, do you want to go to your museum? Yes. So she helped me up. I held my arm up, walked outside, and she got me to the museum. She unlocked the door, turned the lights on, turned the alarm off, and I stood there and looked at everything in there. And I, in my heart, even though I can't communicate, I know, now listen to this. Faith without corresponding actions is void of power. Yes. See, I learned that 54 years ago. And in my heart, I had determined, I'm going to start everything in here before I leave this building. And I walk, I, she helped me over to my oldest Harley Davidson which is a 1942 that actually saw duty in World War II in Russia. And it's been completely restored to its military markings. It's hard to start even when anything, everything on you yeah. is working perfectly. It's not electric start. And, and it's kickstart. Well, how am I going to start a kickstart when I can't even stand up by myself? So she helped me over there. 
and I don't remember how to start it. And my wife told me this. She said, Brother Copeland came up to the hospital and stood over my bed and preached to me for two hours. And she said, I don't know if you even remember him being there, but said the whole time he was there, even though you couldn't say but one word in English and that was yes, you prayed in the spirit the whole time he was there. Now later after I recovered, I asked the Lord about it. I said, why was I able to pray in the spirit when I couldn't say but one word yes in English? He said, it's because your spirit's not connected to your brain. Oh, that was a great revelation. Boy, if you ever, if you ever, if you ever get down and been told impossible to ever recover, pray in tongues because your spirit is not connected to your brain. Amen. So I just started praying in the spirit over that motorcycle because I don't remember how to start it and I'm not leaving that building until I start it. And the spirit of God told me what to do. Did you know the Holy Ghost knows how to start a 42 Harley Davidson? Told me, turn this, turn that, do this, click that, this. And I said, and, and, and I indicated to Rachel, help me up. Get, help me get my right leg up. And I kicked on it three times and it started. Then I went over to my 46 Harley. And it's the same way. And got it started. And then I went to my 57 Harley and got it started. And then I got every motorcycle in there started, all my Harleys, all my Indians, all my Triumphs. And then I went to the cars. My oldest is a 32 Ford Roadster. And I got it started. And then I went, my, I got an exclusive antique Corvette collection. I got all of them started. God. Corvette was first built in 53. My oldest one is a 54. And I got everything in there started and just left everything running. And I like to say the smell of fumes was exhilarating. <laughs> so wonder it hadn't killed me. You know, but I left everything running in there. And then I went by and turned it all off. Okay, and then Rachel's helping me get back to the door. She turns the lights off. She turns the alarm on. We get outside. She shuts the door, and I said, Rachel, give me the keys. She said, Papa, did you see, hear what you said? I said, what? She said, you asked for the keys. I said, well, give them to me. Wow. With my right hand. Amen. She gave me the keys. I locked the door. I took three steps. My memory came back. And within, within two weeks, I was preaching all over the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Do I look like a man who would never travel again? Do I look like a man who would never preach again? Do I look like a man who would never be normal again? Don't answer that one. But anyway... Look what the Lord has done. Amen. Now, if you ask me, do you believe God can do this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. You ask me, can God take you to the maximum? No doubt about it. You believe God can take you to the highest level? No doubt about it. Amen. And it's being unto me according to my faith and it'll be with you according to your faith. Give the Lord your best shout. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Don't be like the man at the pool of Bethesda. Bringing up excuses as to why it can't happen to you. Amen. Amen. I've told people all over the world for many, many years now, the wisest investment that most Christians could make is a roll of duct tape. Yes. Put a piece across your mouth and just shut up. Yes. You can't talk the word, shut up. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I got a question for you tonight before we dismiss. Do you believe he's able to do this? Yes. Then be it unto you according to your faith. Will you go to the maximum? Yeah. Will you go to the highest level of attainment? Yeah. Then be it unto you according to your faith. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sounds like to me you're a candidate. Yeah. So if you really believe it's going to happen, 
Why don't you give the Lord your best shout in advance? Hallelujah. 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 